and Terry Denton. Chapter 3. Spin, spin, spin. Fine. So Mr. Big Shot doesn't want me in the movie. I don't care. It's not like I haven't got more important things to do. That giant unhatched egg, for instance. It's not going to hatch itself. I'd better go and sit on it right now. I don't mind. This is important work. Much more important than making some dumb movie. Hang on. That's a weird noise. It sounds a bit like Jill and her intergalactic space animal rescue service. Returning through the Earth's atmosphere. It is Jill and her intergalactic space animal rescue service. Hi, Andy, says Jill. I just got back from the moon. I had to rescue some mice whose rocket crashed while they were on a cheese-seeking mission. It doesn't seem to matter how many times I tell them the moon is not made of cheese. They just don't listen. Yeah, well, I'm doing some pretty important work here too, I say. I'm helping this giant unhatched egg to hatch. Sounds... That's great, says Jill. I can't wait to see what comes out. Me neither, I say. Where's Terry? Says Jill. He's with a film crew. They're making a treehouse movie. Wow, says Jill. How come you're not there? <sighs> I sigh. The Big Shot Hollywood director, Mr. Big Shot, said he didn't need a narrator. It isn't called a voiceover. Isn't it called a voiceover when it's in a movie? Yeah, well, whatever it's called, Mr. Big Shot doesn't want to. That's too bad, says Jill. Still a movie, that's pretty exciting. I guess so, I say. If you like... Electricorns, that is. Electricorns? Says Jill. Yes, I say. Terry used a combining machine to combine an electric eel with a unicorn. They're filming a reenactment. This I've got to see, says Jill. Good luck hatching that giant unhatched egg, Andy. Thanks, Jill, I say, but she doesn't hear me. She's already gone. Never mind, I'll show them. A giant unhatched egg is more exciting than a stupid old electricorn any day. I mean, it could hatch any minute now. Just you wait. Egg hatching is great. Egg hatching is thrilling. Egg hatching, egg hatching is... I must have dozed off. That's the video phone. I'd better answer it. It's probably probably Mr. Big Nose. Hi, Mr. Big Nose, I say. I guess you're calling about the book. Book? Says Mr. Big Nose. No, I'm calling to find out how the movie is going. Well, I say, I don't know if the movie is going to work out quite the way I'd hoped. Are you kidding? said Mr. Big Nose. I spent a fortune on Big Nose book product placement, so you'd better make it work. 
I'm not sure I'm comfortable with all this advertising, I say, but Mr. Big Nose is already hung up. Rude? Yeah, rude much. Why are you still here, says Mr. Big Shot, climbing up onto my level. Haven't you got a home to go to? The treehouse is my home, I say. I live here. Well, just keep out of the way, says Mr. Big Shot. We're about to film the scene where Terry painted a cat yellow and turned it into a, cana a cat canary. But I was there, I say. I was in that story. I tried to stop him. Well, we can't have that, can we? Says Mr. Big Shot. I think moviegoers will love to see a flying cat. So if you would just keep off the set, that would be great. But, I say, Terry, tell him. Terry shrugs. Sorry, Andy, but it's not really my decision. Mr. Big Shot is the director. Some friend. <laughs> they all head off up to the observation deck. Fine. Film the scene without me. See if I care. Well, he does. Obviously, he wouldn't be saying that stuff. I've only got to help this giant unhashed egg to hatch before I've... Also got 78 plates to spin. Uh, but I've also got 78 plates to spin. Plates don't just keep spinning all day themselves, you know. And plate spinning is a lot of fun. Even more fun than giant unhead, unhashed egg hatching. Looks like I've arrived just in time. Some of those plates really are wobbly. They're about to fall off their poles. Well, I'll soon fix that. See what I mean? Play spinning is better than making a dumb old movie any day. Uh oh. I think I might have spun them a bit too hard. <laughs> Help! yells Terry. The Martians are coming! Flying saucer attack! They're not flying saucers, says Jill. They're plates. Cut! Yells Mr. Big Shot. No plate throwing on set. Sorry, I say. You should be more careful, says Jill. One of those plates almost hit Silky. It was an accident, I say. I just spun them a little bit too hard and they spun off their spinners. Well, lucky for you, we just finished that scene anyway, says Mr. Big Shot. Now we're going to film a reenactment of the time the shark say Terry's underpants. But it's cruel to do that to the sharks again, I say. They got really sick. It's okay, Andy, says Jill. They're just, it's just pretend. They're not real underpants. They're prop underpants. With fish paste. It's actually a treat for the shark. And they're really excited about being in the movie. Yeah, but you know who should be in the movie who was cut from it? Andy. <laughs> so if you could just run along now, Andy, says Mr. Big Shot, patting me on the head. There's a good narrator. What is he, a dog? <laughs> but you can't make the whole movie without me, I say. I was there. I was part of the story. 
We're not making it without you, says Mr. Big Shot. We've got Mel Gibbon to play you. Mel Gibson, I say. He's a bit old, isn't he? Not Mel Gibson, says Mr. Big Shot. Mel Gibbon. Look, here he comes now. But he's a monkey, I say. Oh, no, he's not, says Mr. Big Shot. He's a gibbon. <laughs> Someone needs to teach this dumbass director that a gibbon is a member of the primate family. So did the monkey. And he's also one of the hottest young primates working in the film in, in film today. Plus, he works for peanuts. Literally. But I'll work for free, I say. And I'll make a more convincing Andy than some monkey. Watch this. Hi, my name is Andy. This is my friend Terry. We live in a tree. Well, when I say tree... How many times do I have to tell you, says Mr. Big Shot, we don't need a narrator. I'm not narrating, I say. I'm acting like a narrator. Sounds a lot like narrating to me, says Mr. Big Shot. And me, says Terry. You're a good Andy, Andy says Jill, but I think Mel is better, he's more convincing. Yeah, and he's also funnier, says Terry. But you hate monkeys, I say. I know I do, says Terry, but Mel's not a monkey, he's a gibbon. He is a monkey then, duh. This is ridiculous, I say, shaking my head. I don't believe it. Mel comes over to, Mel comes over to me. Look. He says in a low voice, I understand you're upset. If it's any comfort, I don't like it any more than you do. I was hoping to play Terry. But let's just try to be professional about it, okay? A monkey would make a better Terry than Terry, okay? Professional, I say. The only thing professional about you is that you're a professional thief. You just stole my part in the movie. I didn't steal your part. I was cast, says Mel. Whatever, I say, stomping off the set. If anybody wants to reel me, I'll be in the scribbletorium. But nobody takes any notice, of course. They're all too busy making their dumb old movie. Yeah, I can understand why he felt that way. Next time I'll be reading chapter four. But before I go... Uh, scribble, scribble, scribble. Before I go, I want to encourage you all to subscribe to this channel. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a proper comment below. Maybe a request for a future show in the series. I mean in the franchise. Click the bell for notifications on future videos from this channel. And until the next video, thanks for watching. I'll see you then.